are listening to You've Got Five Options show, where every week Marta and Anna abandon their five children, two partners, and one cat to make a show especially for you. An artist, a challenge, a bullshit, a wisdom, and a surprise. Tune in and feel the magic of five. Let's jump into the bullshit of the week and see what we got there. Say what? Boop, 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 boop. It's bullshit of the week. So this one, this time for bullshit of the week, we have chosen a couple of bits and pieces from the audience, also known as the volunteers. So first the volunteer that will talk about uh, bullshits that she has encountered or thought about uh, on TEDx or who's is none other than Kathy Perez. Let's see what Kathy has to say. Yeah. Um, I think it's bullshit when people, uh, because the third talk talks about fast, fa- uh, fast, fa- fa- Fashion, okay, fast fashion, okay, that's something I to... Here it's uh, allowed, we are not editing out, so... Yeah, so, uh, and, and, and sometimes people think that it's not relatable to them, that it's so far out, like, oh, it doesn't matter, like, I'm doing my everyday life, buying stuff from, you know, this uh, institution like H&M and buying a lot of stuff and throwing a lot. And I've seen and experienced that here in Denmark where people are very, um, they buy in bulk and then they throw away in bulk. And I think it's bullshit. To, to think that you're not part of that. And uh, watching this woman talk about um, what they're doing to actually create more awareness into this um, is also like something that I was like, yes, that's right. Um, it's bullshit when people think it doesn't affect them because we only have one planet and uh, we have to be in here. It's our home and we have to do something. So when people just say, oh, it's uh, like, for example, um, global warming or fast fashion now it doesn't affect no it's bullshit that they don't believe uh, in this. Uh, Kathy was referring to a speech by Maria where she was uh, talking about virtual reality uh, and storytelling and she actually was showing us some slides from one of the bits they created about the sweatshops right yes yes so uh, I think that that inspired Kathy to think about you know Uh, this type of a bullshit and uh, it's a bullshit I guess to think that things don't concern us at all because we are living in our little home apartment or whatever reality um, and Kathy thinks it's a bullshit yeah she brought a really good point being there on the spot being just asked what's the biggest bullshit she pulled it off Yes, so now we will hear from Joey. Joey have a very special place in our heart because from all the volunteers, he actually have volunteered. Yes, so when I think of bullshit, this is going to come across harsh, but sometimes there's a perception that the whole TED brand is bullshit. It's a very made up, polished up, shiny experience that's almost inhuman when you watch it online or on TV or something like that. Being in an event live today, shows you that it is bullshit and it isn't bullshit. It's authentic people. It's authentic experiences. You can see the non-edited experience live on stage. Everyone's nervous at first. That's my eye from being involved in the past. You can see the, the body language. The first minute or so of a talk is always a little more tense. And it's authentic. It's real. It means this is a real person talking to us about real experiences, nothing that's manufactured. Uh, but then after about a minute, their the training that they're given takes over, and they can, they seem a lot more comfortable in stage and with the audience as, as a whole. So just to give you a bit of a background, Joey was actually uh, in the organizer team um, back I think last year, and he he was uh, involved in TEDx Orhus some years prior to to this event. This, that was the first event when he was not. In, uh, in organizing it, right, Marta? Yeah, he was a coach for the speakers mm-hmm. uh, previously. So this time it was really great to talk to him and to have an insight from someone that was on the other side. Exactly. So, yeah, and I can also confirm that what we see on YouTube, it's a quite a different experience than what we see when we are live uh, and, and watching speakers on the stage. 
Um, you, let's just say that uh, TEDx um, is doing some editing. Yes. Yeah, well, it's it's quite interesting when you go to the live show and you see that uh, those people, they actually can get stuck sometimes and they forget, they don't know how to continue. And then suddenly there is a hand coming out from behind the curtain with a text. Yeah. I definitely would not have imagined that this is happening just looking at the videos mm -hmm. where it just looks like these are like world-class speakers, each and every single one of them having absolutely no hiccups whatsoever. So that's the magic of the live event where you can sense an absolutely different level of energy. That is absolutely true. And actually, people cheering uh, and, and trying to encourage the speakers to keep on going because, you know, sometimes you can just like completely lose it. You know, you tripped once and you don't know what to say. And then you can freeze and that's very human. And then people, you know, just like, you know, applauding you to keep on going that that you will not see on YouTube. No, the audience is wow. Yeah, and uh, you will not see it on YouTube literally because uh, there is no uh, footage allowed. You know, people are not. Uh, I think the only people who can film TEDx uh, events are TEDx people and, uh, of course, us because we were invited. Well, no, we, no bragging. <laughs> well, we couldn't uh, actually record the speech. True, true. That we couldn't. No, that is only TEDx. Um, but now we will have two back to back uh, back to back clips uh, where we will hear from John, Arne and Annette and they will talk about uh, bullshits uh, that they have they were inspired to think about after hearing certain speeches from the speakers. We think Denmark is known for having a, a large welfare state yeah. challenging that and saying are we actually doing the best yeah. and I mean, the, the speaker had been, let's say, within inside the system himself to experience it from the inside and maybe see how we can improve that system. Yeah. So that was very encouraging. I actually have to say that uh, personally speaking, uh, that, that uh, speech about uh, the entire system was very eye-opening. It, yes. was, it was something like, wow, the most expensive uh, social system in Europe at least mm. and such a relatively i would say poor results it's it's really something that made me think as well mm, that it's something yeah. that's just accepted that denmark has that system yeah but let's take a step back and see okay maybe we can use those resources in a, in a more efficient way yeah. and actually give the people that require it the best support that we can well the social entrepreneur definitely points out the system how the systems uh, keep people down instead of uh, letting people uh, develop and come back into society by putting them into some frames and uh, put them thing into a jail, so to speak, instead of letting them f free. So I'm looking very much to hear, hear about the results of his experiment that can bring some data that might change legislation in Denmark. Okay, thank you. Annette, mm -hmm. any bullshit from your side? Well, I don't know if it's bullshit, but there was uh, also one of uh, one of the, the 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 persons on the scene. She she uh, told uh, or, uh, yeah talked a lot about that we should learn from the past. And but 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 do we actually do that, or do we do, do we do it enough, or uh, and and do we actually you know change our behavior based on uh, on what we have uh, seen? Uh, so I think that was kind of bullshit. But she also said it. But but I think it's all actually good to remember it because it's so uh, we quite often see, say that oh we have to learn from the past but actually we don't do it yeah I, I think that actually Stefan with his speech about uh, welfare system in Denmark and how ineffective it is comparing to the money spent on it uh, made quite an impact on people Yes, he was definitely one of those speakers with quite, uh, that we have noticed then when we were interviewing the audience mentioned quite a mm -hmm. lot. Yes, I think it was him and also Bryce. And I think it's because Bryce have surprised. Bryce has have surpri has surprised people with, with the dancing. But uh, yeah, Arne even compared it to jail. That was <laughs> cool, Arne. And then Annette also referred to the to the speech by Vanna where, where she was talking about how can we learn from a past and that is coming from archaeologists. So I think it's quite a relevant tip. So um, guys, if you are still wondering what those speeches were because you haven't seen them, uh, I would uh, strongly recommend you to uh, find or be persistent in waiting for the speeches that will be on YouTube released by TEDx crew. 
And you can also go back for more information to the first episode about TEDx and backstage stories that we have released a week ago, because there you can also hear from the speakers themselves. And the last clip regarding the bullshit is Jerry. And let's hope that Jerry will this time find a bullshit that is a bullshit. The whole thing about, you know, environment and sustainability, uh, leading back to like sweatshops uh, with the VR experience, as well as um, the, the, the waste pr food program and all that. You know, I think a lot of things comes back to environment and how we treat our country and the world and the globe. Um, and I'm like, maybe I just think to myself sometimes, like, yeah, I'm really economical friendly. Like, I, I take care of the environment. I'm really friendly in terms of all that. But maybe I'm bullshitting myself because in terms of buying clothes and stuff, I can like, yeah, I need that. I need that as well. Like, so maybe I'm bullshitting myself to think that I need more than I actually need. Um, so that's maybe something that I, I'm going to be thinking a bit more. And I stood down the uh, the man stand with um, the VR experience the whole day during the activity. So I got to talk with a lot of interesting people and they all had the same feeling that this really sparked some thoughts in terms of, okay, maybe we're bullshitting ourselves. Maybe you should think a bit more about like buying clothes from yeah, manufactured in sweatshops and whatever. So I think that's what I'm going to take with me from here. So Jerry has asked a very Shakespearean question, are we bullshitting ourselves? And I think this is actually a perfect summary of, of this segment, don't you think, Marta? Yes, Cathy started with this, Jeremy ended in a beautiful way. So yeah, that was all about the bullshit. Let's jump to the wisdom. A super wise wisdom of the week. So first we have Cynthia, who was yet another volunteer that we have found on the on the event. And she will talk about the importance of sharing stuff about the mental health. Uh, there were some very interesting things about uh, mental health. And uh, I know it's a hot topic right now, but showing vulnerability, showing that, you know, we are all battling certain, you know, certain things and be more open about it so we can be like stronger together. So Marta, I think she's referring to uh, Cecilia's speech, right? I'm actually not sure if she's referring to Sina's or Cecilia's speech. Sina. Okay. Yeah, it could be. You are right. Because both of the ladies were talking about uh, mental health, but from a different perspective. Sina was talking about emotionally or psychologically abusive relationships uh, from a standpoint of, of her as a therapist and psychotherapist. And Cecilia was sharing um, her own personal story about her uh, battle with, with mental health issues. So... Yeah, there were actually two speeches touching upon that. But I think it's it's quite a fair point to assume that she was talking about uh, about Cecilia because you are not there. That means that it's the last segment yes, yes, <laughs> that, that we are that talking means... about. And she was talking about the importance uh, and vulnerability in sharing that. And that was definitely Cecilia who was really vulnerably, vulnerably sharing her story. Yep. And I haven't seen that. I have to wait for the YouTube like most of you guys. So uh, let's see what Christina had uh, to share regarding the wisdoms. Well, I think you can find wisdom in each each keynote that was uh, heard today. And I think you can find inspiration from each of, of them in, the, in a different way. But I think the most important that they wanted to say is, is you have to you have to question things and um, Stop sometimes and, and look at yourself and, and feel yourself and before you do, if, if you're stuck or... A interesting point about looking into yourself when you are stuck. I'm thinking if that was also inspired by Bryce or just in general. No, was Bryce already... Uh, I think, yes, we interviewed Christina after Bryce was having his speech because he was talking about finding your own groove and finding yourself... Right? Yes. 
<laughs> so um, I'm wondering uh, if Christina is uh, referring to this one, but uh, all in all, she said that in all the keynote speeches, you can find some wisdom and that is definitely true. Let's see what Kathy had to share. These three speeches, of course, we started with a uh, reimagine. Um, we was talking about um, this uh, snake bite uh, cure for, for those that are victims of snake bites. Um, that is fantastic. The second one was relate, which I was able to relay in a way that I have seen how abusive relationships have actually um, destroyed people. Um, people that I know who were into abusive relationship and sometimes they just think that they're not into it. They're not a part of it, but you've seen how it destroyed them. And for me, that was brave and, and raw and I love it. I love it. And I also love that she stood in there and saying all these truths about herself that I would not allow anyone to disrespect me, belittle me. And I was just like, you know, this inner cheerleader in me was like, yes, you're right. And if only I could hug her like um, during her talk. But yeah, that was something relatable. And the third one also that's uh, about fast fashion and VR. Awesome, awesome um, talk. But the second one was something that uh, like I truly believe in and because I've seen how it ruined people and that was relatable to me. I think Kathy was referring, of course, to all the three speeches from uh, from the first segment. But uh, the one that impressed her the most was a speech by Sina about uh, emotionally abusive relationships. And that was the powerful one, definitely. Yeah, so th so that's why before when, when the question was like about mental health, because mm -hmm. that one actually also really related yes. to mental health. That is correct. And now we will play uh, the last wisdom clip for today from Anne, the head organizer. And we will see, Marta, if this is what you meant at the beginning of the show. What was the biggest wisdom that you have learned in that process? Because, of course, the speakers will bring a lot of wisdom uh, with them to the, through their speeches. But what was the biggest wisdom for you as you were organizing that event? Um... I think for me it was the the amazing things you can achieve when you work with volunteers. Um, volunteers don't get paid and that's not because they aren't worth anything, it's actually because they're priceless. And I think that's the wisdom that I learned, that, that you can't put a price on volunteers because it's, it's their dedication that drives all this. And that's amazing because many people say, you know, when you don't pay for something, it's not as worthy, people will not be as dedicated, they will not be as committed. Is that something that you could say it's a bullshit? That is absolutely bullshit. Um, <laughs> yeah, that is bullshit. Um, like all the volunteers we have are super dedicated and, and, and honestly they have not slept in the past two weeks. They've been working so hard um, and, and you can't do something like this when, where you have to work for a whole year if you're not dedicated and, and they absolutely are. So, Marta, is this what you were referring to? Did I fulfill your expectations? Yes, that was really what I was uh, referring to. And that part, I really think, is amazing and really worthwhile noticing. And that's, that's a true wisdom that, uh, that volunteers are pri priceless. I completely agree. And with this very wise accent, we will finish the segment to jump into the left field. O G from the left field. Okay, Marta. So uh, this is a clip called "A Very Curious Case of Adam," and I believe you know something about this. Yeah, that was completely unplanned. That was from the left field uh, for me as well. It was actually Jerry who suddenly brought Adam and he said, you have to talk to this guy. You really, really have to talk to this guy. So I just jumped on and talked to the guy. And let's hear what he had to say. We have a surprise for you guys, something extra. You can say something from the left field. We actually found out that we have quite a special person here with us. Someone that keeps on coming back all the way from Greece to see TEDx Aarhus every year. Hello, Adam. Hi, nice to meet you. Nice to meet you too. So I just have to ask, what makes you come back here to Aarhus every year? Okay, so it basically all began um, 
ever since I was like 16 years old, I was a huge TED Talk fan. I was watching a lot of online videos at the time. And then uh, I moved to Denmark from Greece uh, at the age of 18 for uh, study related purposes. And that was actually uh, August 2016 when uh, TEDx Aarhus initially started. And I just knew I had to get there, so I, I just pressed the button, buy the ticket, and I came here for the first time in uh, 2016. And after that, I just kept coming back. Uh, the part where it actually gets interesting, it was uh, when I had a lot of uh, friends of mine from uh, Horsens, which is uh, where I'm studying, uh, convinced about TEDx Aarhus. So we were coming back here together until the point where I was heading back to Greece for the fifth semester, which was my internship, and I got hired by a company in Athens. So I got teased a lot by my friends that I would not be here at the time where the TEDx Aarhus would be uh, back in October in 2019. So I just had to prove them wrong. So I just hopped on the plane, came here for the weekend, and I was present then. And now I'm actually studying in Prague, and uh, I couldn't let the tradition go, so I just had to come back here again. So flew here for the weekend just for this event. So in your face, uh, student uh, friends of Adam, he's really dedicated. Will we see you here next year? Definitely. I'm going to be here every year as long as this is a thing, no matter where I am. Okay, great. So since you have agreed to talk to us, I do need to ask you that question. What was the biggest surprise you have been here every time, exactly. so what was the biggest surprise this time in this TEDx? Uh, surprise. Uh, I, I would say the en engagement when it comes to virtual reality, which comes to be a huge part in, in, in our world, as well as the new venue, which actually happens to be a, a lot of fun as well. I was uh, convinced, per personally I was convinced to our old venue in, in Tivoli, but uh, I, I would not have any problems with uh, the event being hosted next year here, because I do love it and it's great. Marta, Marta, Marta. That was a very loving in your face, I wanted to say. <laughs> uh, you can clearly see that I have been there. It's been a long day. Yes. And I think I have already picked up a glass of wine at that point. Could of be, time. could be. In your face, Adam's friends. <laughs> <laughs> but I enjoyed it a lot. It's uh, actually quite amazing. The guy keeps on coming back to the Dex Aarhus and he will be keep on coming back until this thing is still a thing. So I think that we will now jump to the second part of the bloopers. Hello again. Yet another stalked human being that yes. has totally voluntarily agreed to be interviewed by us here today. He just today came from to us. He just came to us. Totally, totally. Just <laughs> ran after us and asked if he could be interviewed by us. Hello, tell us your name, please. Hi, I'm Joey. Joey. Hi, Joey. How are you doing? <laughs> you get that's that a lot. One, <laughs> we are very creative at the radio, you know, so. Yeah? And, and last thing, I've yeah. never said bullshit so many times in one minute in my whole life. So <laughs> really, like, wow. We are glad to inspire. <laughs> thank you, guys. Thank That's you. That's what we do. We inspire Welcome people. and thank you. I'm happy that she said no to me in the past. That's something you don't hear usually from a man. <laughs> but, uh, okay, so tell me. Uh... Hello, everyone. We are now hunting the audience, trying to find someone that would like to talk to us. And yeah. one of the first persons we've met is Kathy, who has already been with us, and you've got five options, not yeah. only once, but twice. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Hello, Kathy. Hi, it's so nice to see you girls here. It's nice to see you again. Yeah, nice and, to see you And Kathy has a, a little... Uh, belly. Yes, so she actually smuggled an extra person yes. for TEDx or... Illegal, <laughs> totally illegal. illegal. <laughs> I trust her. She'll be great. <laughs> okay, so Cynthia, we will find you afterwards and follow up with you if you actually liked the speech and if it fulfilled the expectations. No pressure, Sarah, no pressure, TEDx or This should be a hashtag, no pressure, TEDx or who's? <laughs> yeah, Marta, so there, were be, there was a little bit more of a, a bloopers uh, this time. Uh, I think my favorite uh, ones were the ones with uh, Joey, especially the, how you doing? <laughs> I'm like, ah. Oh. 
I, I would like to say that this was uh, the a very early morning. So Marta has no excuses with I have drank a bit of uh, wine because I know she didn't. But uh, yeah, uh, if you want to see those uh, bloopers, then you definitely need to uh, check our website and uh, and check the video because this is an entire TV program. If you are listening to us, I hope that at least uh, partially your ears were satisfied. And we will end up with uh, reflections because we have actually recorded reflections at the end of uh, of our uh, duty uh, on on TEDx Aarhus. And uh, yeah, I think the, they will speak louder than what we will say three months after. So let's. So hi guys, I am here alone, and that is because I have to go home. As you probably remember from all of our episodes, I have a little baby home, so I was able to catch some of the TEDx Orhus today, but not the whole. So Marta, good luck. You will be doing the last interviews on your own. And we agreed that we will be sharing uh, our experiences from today's day. And Guys, I have to tell you, interviewing people, it's not an easy thing at all. We had to run and find the speakers and find the people from the audience that are willing to talk to us because not everyone is able just to make an interview on a go. And uh, we were running around and uh, I think we pulled it off. But I have to say there is a lot of adrenaline, a lot of stress. There will be a lot of hiccups in this program. Uh, because we are not in the studio, so of course the environment is different. But I'm super grateful and I'm super excited. And even if I have to go home, I am still very, very happy that I was here for most part of the day. And Marta asked me to uh, share some bullshit from myself about the TEDx Orhus. So I cannot share any bullshit about the event because the event is truly fantastic. But I will tell you that there is one bullshit that I have today encountered and let's say it turned into wisdom. A week ago, I thought I won't be able to do it. Uh, I have a three month old baby and she's home now with her dad and with my mother, but it's a whole day event and I was thinking, it's not possible to pull it off. I cannot just disappear for the entire day. And uh, my little daughter right now is actually teething, so her teeth are coming out and she's crying. And I was like, I think I will just resign from this and I will not do it, but with a fantastic support of my family and uh, fantastic support from Marta, who is my co-host, I have managed to come here and do the job at least most of the time. So that is the biggest bullshit I would like to present to you, that actually you can do it. Sometimes something can seem to be impossible and so scary, but you can do it if you will find the right people to support you and if you will find just a bit of determination and stamina in yourself. So I'm grateful for this experience. I'm happy that I did it. And um, and that's all, guys. I really hope you are enjoying this. And Marta, good luck, because now you're on your own. Um, and yeah, that was Anna from You've Got Five Options. Okay, guys, I have been here from 9 in the morning, and now it's 7.30 p.m. I have experienced 11 amazing speeches. I have talked to so many people today. It has been an amazing journey. I have learned so much and I definitely myself have quite a lot of wisdom to bring with me home. Quite some surprises, a lot of bullshits that point right back at me. So thank you so much for listening to us and stay tuned. So Marta, I have to ask you, what was your biggest bullshit that you have discovered? Because I was actually uh, sharing and sharing and caring like Joey. Yeah, well, you can see the difference uh, from you talking when there is still some light on the background. You were <laughs> living when uh, uh, when we still had uh, like the sunlight. Yeah. And I was uh, living quite some more hours after that. And mm -hmm. you could see that I was not as sherry yeah. <laughs> as you were. Yeah, I was pretty exhausted at that point of time already. And the bullshits that I've mentioned there pointing back at me were actually very aligned with what Kathy and Jerry have talked about, meaning the, uh, the like, you know, like, how sustainable are we? Mm -hmm. And that was a very good bullshit to ponder about.
That is correct. So I guess that this is how we will close this show. Marta, thank you for being there with me on TEDx Orhus 2019. Yeah, I'm really grateful, Anna, for that. And for you guys, there was so much drama happening before we even got there. And uh, how many uh, cameramen we have <laughs> almost got and then lost and then got again and then lost and then got again. And uh, finally, it ended up with Lasse, who did a fantastic job. Thank you, Lasse, really. You and saved us. You saved us. You supported us. And we are really grateful. Okay, guys, stay tuned and goodbye. Bye. Bye.